Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. It is a brand new day. Actually, it's the beginning of a brand new week. And as you can see behind me, I have what is left of the Mustang back from the Sandblaster. So I think I'm gonna try to do things just a tad bit different. <clears throat> as many of you guys know, this has been my part-time job for the past eight years. And the shop has finally evolved to the point where I can no longer I can no longer maintain this at a part-time level. The demand on some of the cars that people are wanting to bring in, it's it's just becoming very overwhelming. So over the course of the next few months, I'm gonna be moving into the shop uh, probably on a more full-time basis. So with that being said, I'm gonna be actually in the shop every day. So I think I'm gonna try to change up my my filming techniques just a little bit. I still want to bring you guys hopefully good content, but I believe I'm going to try to start at the week at the beginning of the week and basically we'll just go over several of the projects that are in the shop and we'll film a little bit on each one. So hopefully that uh, hopefully that'll work. Um, I, I think I'm going to try this this week and we'll see how it goes. But anyway, I've got a few things this week that I want to try to get done. One of them is, as, you, as I said, I do have this body back. My next step on this is I want to get everything blown off very well. There's a few areas that I want to scrape some seam sealer off of, do a little bit of prep work on this tub, and then I'm going to get this thing into epoxy primer. The next thing, um, I've been cleaning shop just a little bit. Um, the Camaro is still sitting here. I've got the front bumpers tucked. If you guys watched the last video on that car, the front bumpers tucked. I have the footage of the rear bumper and I will get that edited and hopefully get it out this week as well. Whoops. So the other part of the Mustang build is the chassis, which where we left off on the chassis was I was actually, I, I disassembled the chassis. I've got a bunch of the parts down to the, to the powder coater and back. They are up front. The chassis, my, my plan is next is on this, I wanna get it mounted at a height that, that I want and I'm gonna get it secured to this, to this jig table. So that is the other thing. Another thing I've been tripping over for quite some time and I finally last week forced myself into doing this, but this is a hood for a second gen Camaro. This is a basically a four inch cow and they don't make a four inch cow steel hood. So I'm in the process of building one. So we may be able to work on that just a little bit. So the last thing is I've got Kevin C10 up front and I've been doing a little bit of work to what I can on the chassis until I get the body back. So hopefully I'm going to, uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy what I'm putting together and, uh, maybe help this channel grow just a little bit more. So anyway, before I get too carried away, as I always do, uh, thank you for coming along and, uh, thank you guys for subscribing. And once again, if it is your first time that, to stumble upon the channel, uh, please give me a, give me a subscribe, give, give this video a like. And, uh, like I said, I'm always, I try to interact with folks. So if you do have suggestions or, you know, things that are constructive, Hey, drop me a line in there. And, uh, I, I'm always, I always try to get you guys, I try to reply back to you. So anyway, uh, what do you guys say? How about coming along and let's see what we can get done this week. I got the car off the, actually got the road. <laughs> I got something off the of something or other, what you call it. So, so what I need to do is, you can see, I do have the body upside down, and when you start watching the time lapse, trust me, it's not going to be an optical illusion. It's it is upside down, and the first area that I need to work is in the under the dash area between the firewall and the cow. There's still a lot of seam sealer that are in those joints. And I wanna just do due diligence to get a lot of that stuff scraped out. Additionally, I've already been doing quite a bit of blowing and I've got a leaf blower. I've been sticking in some of the cracks and crevices trying to get all of the sand blown out of every orifice, so to speak. 
And once I'm at that point, then I believe we'll start basically just lacing in some epoxy on this thing. But anyway, uh, we did see a little bit more damage in a few areas that, uh, one, I wasn't anticipating this in the firewall, which is pretty much a simple fix. However, the most significant part is this rocker on the driver's side. It, it's got some old damage and some old sin in here. Uh, you can see back in the day, they used a dent puller, the screw type dent pullers, and uh, they got that out the best they could, but you can almost imagine there was a pretty thick amount of body filler in there. So I'll have to get a rocker, and I don't know if I'm gonna replace the entire, the entire rocker, but maybe just replace what I need to. So anyway, I'm gonna get set up and I'm gonna get after this thing. Good grief, that was a ton of work. So as you can see, I have it epoxy coated. Now you're probably thinking, well, you missed a bunch of spots. Well, some of these parts that you see that are still bare metal may get, may get cut off and replaced. Uh, for example, I might end up, I do have a new core support here and I may make that core support to where it is actually a bolt-on part. Additionally, these aprons, I might, uh, I I'm actually thinking about, I do have new ones. And even though someone has replaced the one on this side, it's pretty, the work is pretty shoddy, but I may end up building some custom panels. It just depends. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the way those look. So we may do something a little bit different, but I started with a smaller paint gun because I was up underneath the dash. I didn't need something that was going to be really big. And I eventually traded that out for a larger paint gun. Now, 
Once again, I didn't spend a ton of time filming this. I just got you guys enough to uh, just got you enough to see what what we're actually up against. But I believe I've got it coated pretty good. Um, I switched up. There was a little bit of different. The first the first epoxy I was using was a DP90, and then I went to a different primer, which I'm hoping doesn't affect anything. But for the most part. Most of the panels, most of the stuff that that is going to be put on the car to this point is going to be all new panels anyway. And we'll probably end up stripping those and epoxying those as well. So anyway, up next is the chassis. And I'm going to, I need to make a trip to a local steel shop, uh, actually a yard, um, and pick up some steel. So I believe, whoops. I'm going to run up and grab some metal, and then I'm going to come back and see if I can get the chassis somewhat cinched down to this frame table. So another thing, that took way more time than it should have. Like, it ate up the biggest majority of my day. So anyway, I'm going to make a trip, and uh, I'll be back shortly. All right, I am back. Um, I think I found what I needed. So one of the nice things about where I go and pick up my bulk metal is they have a drop pile, which I'm sure a lot of these places do. In this case, I found basically some two by two, and it looks to be like 11 gauge. Now, there are a couple in the center that's galvanized, which is not a big deal, but I think I've got a game plan. I, I have them cut down. Basically, I think I'm gonna bolt, I'm gonna drill and bolt these, these square tubes down to the jig, and then I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use some of this pipe, hang on. Um, I've got some of this pipe left over from where I built the structure. And I think what I'll end up doing is I'm just gonna cut on both sides of this, I'll cut my pipe, the height that I can get this chassis uh, basically set as far as a, a ground, eh, basically a ride height. So anyway, it's getting a little bit late this evening. So I, I've got this stuff somewhat, somewhat cut and I think I'm gonna come back in the morning fresh and we'll start drilling these holes I've got some all thread. We're going to see if we can bolt them. I may end up going ahead as as well as bolt them. I may go ahead and just tack them down to this thing. So anyway, like I said earlier, that stinking the the body. It took way too much of my time for the day. So it's it's getting later in the afternoon. I think I'm going to roll it up, and I want you guys to have a great evening. And I'll see you back here first thing in the morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm back in the shop, and hopefully you guys had a great evening. So I'm not gonna waste any more time. I, as I said yesterday, I'm gonna try to get this chassis mounted. So come along, let's, uh, let's see if we can get this thing mounted and then maybe later today we can get the body set down on it. Basically, all I'm gonna do on these square tubes is I'm gonna get them centered up into this chassis jig. I'm gonna drill some holes and then luckily, I, I have a bunch of these long bolts. And all I really want to do at that point is I'm gonna go through here we're gonna go bolt these square tubes down to the chassis in, some, in a handful of places down through here. Now, I will set up my laser and I will try to shoot a center line on the chassis table and get the, the chassis as straight as I can in this jig. However, I don't think it's super, super critical because I'm not actually building anything off of this. So I'm just trying to get it clamped down and get it to where it's gonna hold into place while I start building the rest of the body out. So anyway, <clears throat> I don't want to film a bunch of this because it's it's going to be somewhat boring. So I think what I'll do, I will come back once I have once I have the square tubes mounted to the ch the chassis jig, and then at that point I'm going to take the round tubing and I will cut this to length and basically set up a ride height and probably tack it to the square tubing and the underneath of the chassis. So anyway, I'll get this set up and I'll be back whenever I get that done.
back. Um, pretty much I've got everything fastened down from here. Basically these four braces across the center of the car, I've got these things fastened down. I've tacked them to the underneath of the car. And I'm gonna grab the camera and kind of give you guys an up close and, and kind of show you what I've done. Nothing real fancy, but anyway, let me grab the camera and uh, I'll show you exactly where we're at. We'll start here in the front. I have the laser on still, and as you can see, I've, I've marked the chassis and the square tubes, I've got center line markings on those. So I have the chassis pretty straight. Um, I've got a couple of marks up there. Let's see if you can see that one. And once again, there's one more back there. So I have this centered up, and the biggest reason is just in case I need to reference anything as this body goes together, then I'm, I'm in good shape to where I've got a good center line to where I, 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 nothing's questioned. So also, as you can see, the, the pipe, I've got those welded in. They're basically, they're tacked in about three or four spots on the square tube. The, the square tubing is actually bolted to this center runner. So this thing is very sturdy. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. And I'm at the point now where I think I've got this fastened down secure enough to where I'm gonna come in in the morning. Um, it's, it's my day starting to get used up. So I'm gonna come in in the morning and I'm gonna try to get that, uh, get the body off the rotisserie and we're gonna bring hopefully this spec chassis and we're gonna make the two together. So anyway, uh, you guys have a great evening. I'll see you back here in the morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm back in the shop and it's a little cool in here this morning, but regardless, um, I'm gonna sit here and drink my coffee and uh, collect my thoughts for just a bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna read these directions on this Roadster Shop chassis. So hopefully uh, get this thing figured out and we'll see if we can get that chassis underneath that car today. I got the car out of the rotisserie and have it basically sitting on the two post lift. And after studying the, the manual just a little bit, there are a few modifications that have to be made up here. Now, this car already had the shock towers removed. Um, somebody had actually started this uh, a different project on this car. So basically I need to go in here. I'm gonna clean this up second. These frame rails where these lips are at, I have to cut these off and actually weld this, the top of these rails together and somewhat flatten this, flatten this rail. So that uh, is one of the modifications that have to be made up here. And as you can see in the pictures above, there's a few things according to the manual that these two areas that I've got have to be formed, which I guess in the, the simplest terms, they, they basically have to be massaged with a hammer. So me being the guy that I am, I don't think I'm gonna beat that up with a hammer. So I'll end up cutting those sections out and maybe flip them or we'll box those in. So anyway, I am going to set up and I'm gonna start making these cuts and get this part ready.
I got this side knocked out, so you can pretty much see what I had to do. Basically, I squared this. There's a, a lip flange here, cut it off, and then I trimmed out. I trimmed out around the, t the shock tower just a little bit better. There's really not going to be anything that's structural that's going to be that's going to be hinging upon this area. So basically, I went ahead and welded this back. So now it's nice and square. And as you can see, I have to do that on the other side. So I am going to I'm going to knock the other side out. I'm not going to film that. So once that's done, hopefully, hopefully we'll be ready to drop this body down on that chassis. So I'll see you guys in just a bit. The moment is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. I am pretty confident that I have everything either removed from these frame rails, the bottom of the car. I've got both of these, these frame rails in the front. I have these both squared off. I've, I've just sprayed a little bit of rattle can etching primer. I had another brace right there that I forgot, emergency brake cable brace, but I do believe that I am going to try, which there shouldn't be any issue. I'm going to set that thing down. There's, there's some hardware and stuff that I'll have to dig out of my parts area that will bolt that down. So anyway, uh, we're going to see if the, we can marry these two. Got it fitting pretty close. I had to open up the frame. There's a frame pocket on the on the the chassis. I had to open it up just a little bit. And I do believe before I send it out to powder coat, I probably will open them up just a tad bit more. But I've got it setting fairly close. Um, I'm, I'm somewhat studying, have been studying this thing to kind of uh, just kind of looking at the fitment. And you know, there's it's definitely I thought that I thought it actually would fit down a little tighter, especially back in the frame rail area. But anyway, I'll grab the camera and, and uh, we'll walk around and check this thing out because, in all fairness, this is where this car is going to probably be sitting for the next several months as as I build out the rest of this body. So I'll grab the camera. We'll take a closer, deep, deeper look into this. We will just start right up here. And now you see why we had to cut those. We had to cut these frame rails because there are some pieces that, that actually bolt here and clamp and then they drill through here. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that a couple of these might actually be locating holes for those. There's some sleeves that slide through there. Additionally, there are some rubber strips that go in this. Uh, I'm sure they're somewhat anti-squeak, but there's, I would have, this is what I, some of what I was talking about. I would have thought that these, these frame rails would have fit tighter in these pockets, but there is a body mount that, that goes here. And as you can see with no floorboard, this one will, uh, we'll have to wait to put this one in. So moving on back, there's some mounts that are actually designed to bolt right here that will actually bolt in where the original shackle went. So Lastly, as you can see, it might have to go down just a little bit to get it off of this rail, but there's some bracing right there that also use the rear shackle bolt. So for the most part, it, it's, it fits pretty good. I, I couldn't have got any closer with the, uh, with the frame that I built in there. I didn't realize that that was going to get that close, but, and I may end up having to move that, but for the most part, it is here. Um, and now, like I said, I, once I get this thing bolted down and get it secured, 
<clears throat> then I got a ton of work to do. Um, I wanted to get these three, these two bolted together to where there was no flex in this chassis and the base of this tub. So now I'm gonna start trying to get all of the, uh, as you see here, here's the roof structure that's already ready. So that'll be the next thing that goes on. But anyway, I think, uh, I think that's about all I'm gonna do on this car tonight. So we'll figure out, uh, figure out what else I got to work on this evening. So we'll see you here in just a minute. So with it being as late in the day as it is, I think I'm gonna finish out the day working on this hood. I don't know if I've, I, I don't know that I've shared much on this, this particular hood, but this is for a, a second generation Camaro. And since they don't make a steel four inch cow hood, we've had to kind of build one. And as you can see, there's, uh, there's gonna be a ton of welding um, that I have to do on this thing. And one of the biggest things that I have to do is I have to weld it super, super slow. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to throw on some time lapse and put on a little bit of music. And uh, I'm gonna finish out the day and I'll let you guys watch this and I will see you back here in the morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm back in the shop and just kind of walking through the front. Uh, as you can see, I, I did tell you guys the other day that I had Kevin C10 in here. And I've been doing a little bit of work to this truck. I'm hoping by the weekend that we have his cab back and basically I can get the cab set and I can start uh, really hopefully making some big progress on this thing. But Anyway, uh, let's go back in the back and uh, let's see what we have waiting for us. Um, I think today I've, I've been kind of bringing you guys into the shop every day. Um, and I do have to kind of say, by the way, this is a Chevelle. This is for a friend of mine. Uh, he, he, keeps busting, he keeps busting my tail about uh, every car I post. He's like, hey, that's not a Chevelle. But we are going to work on the Chevelle at some point this week. So... Anyway, that's to you. That's for you, Philip. So <clears throat> back in the back, as you can see, the, the Mustang is sitting here. And uh, I did get a little bit of work done to the hood yesterday. So anyway, I think today I'm going to jump back over on the Camaro. Um, I did tell you guys I've, I've got the bumpers tucked. And basically, I'm ready to start doing the flush mounted glass. I was able to get the front and it's not busted. So I've got some footage that I have already filmed on the setup for the rear glass and the approach, whoops, and the approach and how I am going to tackle this. And I think I have it nailed down to where basically I've got it to a position now where I'm gonna pull the glass back out and I'm gonna start doing the actual metal work around the opening. So 
Anyway, hopefully, hopefully you enjoy the, the footage that's already filmed, and I will see you guys shortly. I'm going to start working on this rear glass, and as you can see behind me, I basically, that's some 3M spark paper. I've, I've covered both front and back and then masked the edges just basically to protect it. Now, I don't plan on doing any welding on the car with that glass in, the, in there anyhow, so that is merely just a, a coating to hope, hopefully protect it. So what I did find out on the, the front was basically this glass is designed to flush with the actual up to the very top of the body so you can't see it very well but what i found in the front was basically i raised the glass the bed i put an eighth inch spacer underneath the glass and then since we're going to use roughly a three eighths bead of urethane that is is basically what i'm going to do i'm going to stick this metal tab down. I've got some, some Instacure, some MaxiCure stuff here. I'm gonna try to just go around this windshield bed and I'm gonna try to stick the, these spacers on with this with these 3 8 gaps. These are just paint sticks that I've cut and hopefully that will get the glass flushed up where I need it. And if, if it does, then I'm in good shape. So I'll once I'm there, I'll begin the actual fitting and see where we're at with, actu with the, the window plug itself. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna try to get done. I think I've given that glue plenty of time to set up. So now I'm gonna pre-fit that back glass in there. So get over here a little bit closer and you can pretty much see what this is going to achieve. That is basically the thickness of the glass. And uh, hopefully if that'll get the glass to where it's flush with the body, then the next step will be to figure out just how well it fits in this hole. set in place and it's it's pretty flush in some areas but yet it's still a little bit high but I do feel that given the amount of urethane that we use we're gonna we're actually going to dictate how far in this glass goes into this body so I am a little bit high here it does have me a little concerned because the glass is not actually touching the sticks here so I've got something else going on um, and which it starts getting high about the middle over. So I'm gonna correct that. But you can also see I've, I've tried to maintain an eighth inch gap around the window. And as you can see, both sides are a little bit wide for that eighth inch gap. So my next, my next plan is I've got some reference marks here that I'm going to leave, which are basically marks that represent the edge of this glass. So I'm gonna pull the glass out, get rid of all the stuff. And as I told you guys earlier, I'm gonna start building an eighth inch bed all the way around this glass, or excuse me, the, the car basically. I'm gonna raise that bed by an eighth of an inch. And once I'm done, then I'm gonna start working at these, these side channels and try to get those closed up. So anyway, I am going to uh, get set up and I think that's the next step on getting the rear glass installed. So after I removed the paint sticks and the metal strips, that, that glue proved to be a pretty good challenge. So I got that stuff out of there. I cleaned up the, the channel, I wire wheeled it, and I applied my 3M, basically weld through zinc primer. So 
I did have one section up there at the top that's that's got some pretty good pitting in. I wire wheeled that area exceptionally well. And somewhat of a disclaimer, if I wasn't putting this oversized glass and if I wasn't if I wasn't going to put basically this steel down in this bed, I would probably cut that section out and redo it. But anyway, got the, the, the rust cleared and basically it's going to be sandwiched. You'll, it should never have an issue in this car. So the next thing I'm going to end up doing is I'm just going to start making some templates with cardboard and then I'm going to transfer it to steel and then I'm going to basically get the steel ready. So that's what's going to be next. Um, just wanted to kind of explain the process uh, and it'll be fairly lengthy by the time I get it all done. So once once I get it done and get things kind of clamped in, I will uh, jump back on here and we'll we'll kind of give an update. So there you have it. So for the most part, you guys saw, I just transferred that pattern to this metal. I was able to get this to cut out. I had to put a slight radius in these pieces and I got both of these built. Of course, you can also see the spot weld holes that are, that are popped in here. So basically I'm going to end up just fastening these down and then I'm going to tack weld where the spot weld holes are at and then I'm gonna repeat the process. So. One thing that I did note that's, that's kind of interesting to note, especially the, given the fact that this car has had such extensive metal work done, was when I made the pattern off of the driver's side, basically I brought it over here and it fit. Like everything was pretty well squared. All these angles were shaped the same. So that actually made me feel pretty good knowing that the car went back together as, as close as it did. So. Anyway, I'm going to basically, I'm going to, I'm going to repeat this process until I have this entire bed done. And I don't know that I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to film all of that. So we may wait and I will jump back in whenever I start the front windshield. So I'm going to finish out the day here. And just like I've been doing for the rest of this video, I want to wish you guys a great evening and I will see you back here first thing in the morning. Hey, what's up everybody? As you can see, I'm back in the shop this morning and I have already been hard at work moving stuff around. I'll show you what I've been getting ready for. But yesterday evening we left off, I was working on the back windshield, uh, or excuse me, the back glass of the 69 Camaro. I did get a little sidetracked and didn't get a whole lot more done. Um, I did do a little bit more tack welding on the Camaro hood here and it just pretty much ate up the rest of my day. But as you, we will see real quick, I'll, I'll try to grab the camera and we'll go over here and we'll look, but I've had to do, of course, my OCD ten, tendencies uh, tend to kick in, so I had to do a little bit of cleaning today, but that's Kevin's C10 chassis. So there is a very good possibility between now and the weekend, uh, which honestly today is Friday. I'm hoping that we do have the, at least the cab back. So that thing was, uh, it was up front and I spent the morning moving the, moving everything around in the shop so I could actually skate it through that door over there from the front to get it back here. So anyway, that is done. And now I think, I think I'm gonna jump back on the, the back glass on the Camaro. There is one spot that I didn't fix that I did happen to notice. I, it's, it's a little small gap that needs to be taken, oops, that needs to be taken care of. But if you can see, Right up there where the quarter meets the roof skin, there's a small void right there. 
and I have to fix that real quick. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and continue making my, my templates for the upper corners and go ahead and start getting some of this tacked in. So anyway, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna start the morning with that. So we'll see you guys after a bit. So there you have it. And to be fair, today has been crazy. I've had a lot of people in and out of the shop. So lost a lot of time for my day, but I was able to salvage enough time to where basically I got from here to here on both sides of the, the window channel done. They're basically, they're, they're all welded in. I've got them all tacked. I might, I don't know if you can see it, but I might bring the TIG rig and I might burn some some silicon bronze on this edge just to kind of help float it out and seal this off. So anyway, um, it's, it's been quite a week. Um, I somewhat have got a lot done, but then I, I look back on the week and I think, man, I probably should have got more done, but for the most part, it's been a productive week. So <clears throat> I think with that being said, I'm, I may come in tomorrow, which is going to be Saturday morning. I may come in and work for about four hours. Um, I could work on this. I've got some other stuff that, that needs some attention. I actually sold an engine today that I've got to basically take the top end off of it. So I may come in and do that in the morning, but I don't know that I'll film that. So anyway, hey, I appreciate you guys tuning in to this and hopefully, hopefully you like this style a little bit. If you do, drop me a comment and uh, I may try to keep doing something to this nature as far as the filming. I still want to continue to, to focus on some of the, the the projects as a whole to where I'm just putting out one video per subject. So anyway, um, as I always tell you guys, I, I appreciate you, uh, appreciate you looking, uh, checking my channel out. And, uh, like I said, if this is your first time, I want to say again, uh, thank you for, for stopping by and watching this. So as I always say, I will see you on the next one.